Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. Underwriting deals is such a major pain point for people. Most don't want to do it, and the people that are good at it are few and far between. That is why after six years of being in the industry and buying over 1,200 apartments, using my best-selling multifamily deal analyzer, I created Real Estate Lab, a full suite acquisition software for multifamily investors. We have built a product that helps investors automate their acquisitions and close more deals, all in a cloud-based platform. You can go to realestatelab.com and sign up today using the promo code TAG2 for 10% off your first 12 months. This is David Tupin. Thanks for listening. Welcome, everybody. Back. Another episode of The Apartment Guys podcast is coming at you right now because you chose to tune in, which is a sign of your future success, if not current success, because successful people listen to podcasts like this. And I'm joined today again by the one and only Chelsea Garber. Chelsea, awesome to see you this morning. Great to be back, Tate. And I'm super excited about uh, today's episode. I think there's going to be a, some real good uh, key takeaways and pull out your notepad. Right, right. So what we're going to talk about today is building your power team. And by power team, I don't mean your company or your internal team uh, per se, but we're talking about the kind of tertiary, if you will, uh, key people in your business that really are like absolutely crucial to both getting deals done and once you own deals, uh, owning and operating those deals. So your power team, and you want to, you want to think of, you really want to contextualize these, these few, these people that we're going to go through as your power team. And you want to treat them that way. You want to basically just like love on them, nurture those relationships and uh, really get tight with the people that are doing really, really important things for you, like bringing you deals or managing your deals or funding your deals, sponsoring your deals. So with that, we're just going to jump right into the key components of your power team. And if you're just starting out, you're going to want to take really careful notes because you're going to need all of these relationships. If you're experienced, you probably have a power team and you may or may not call it that, but all of those relationships that with lenders, brokers, sponsors, construction managers, property managers, and attorneys, and all of those people, title people, the, all of the people that really make your business go, right? And you need every one of these and you want all these relationships to be trusting relationships and uh, powerful relationships, people, that'll, that, uh, people that will align with your vision and people that will catch what you're trying to do and uh, are committed to making you successful. So with that, let's start with the very first power team member that we think is essential to develop a relationship with. And that is your sponsor or your KP or your key principal. Chelsea, uh, you want to talk a little bit about your sponsor? Yeah, of course. So your sponsor is going to be the person that may or may not be internally on your, on your team, but likely if you're just getting started, somebody that you have met through networking or through other syndicators, but the sponsor is the person who is, comes with experience. They are the guarantor on the loan. Um, they are going to bring all the qualifications to help you get your, not only your first deal done, but likely many deals done. So building a relationship early on with a key principle um, like, is absolutely imperative to, to your business. And we've talked about this a lot in the last couple episodes about 
you know, how they're going to bring credibility to not only the deal itself, but getting the re- those relationships built with your other core members or team members, which are going to be your brokers and your lenders. They're all going to want to know what type of experience you have, and your sponsor will bring that experience. Um, the sponsor will, you know, be part of the GP equity. Oftentimes, they might often also be part of the LP equity and when it comes to raising capital. So building these relationships, um, you know, I think it's best, like most things in this business, you don't need a hundred different sponsors, find one or two that you really know and like, and are maybe willing to uh, be sort of a role model per se, and and be willing to give up a a lot of the first deal to them and the other team members to get that one done. Um, Their their resources are going to take you a long way. Right. And th- like, this is such a key re- relationship because you really can't do your first deal without your, without a sponsor or a KP. Obviously, if you have the requirements yourself to qualify for a loan, then that's great. And you can sponsor your own loan. That said, you still need the resume and the, and the experience that uh, a bank needs to see to loan for you. So a couple quick tips on developing a relationship with a sponsor I really think that the best way to develop a relationship with a sponsor is to either have a live deal or a sample deal that you can take to uh, somebody like uh, that's a candidate for this position and, and basically say, you know, if I were to bring you something like this, is this something you'd be interested in? And here's what they need to have. They need to have a net worth that's, that's at least equal to, the amount of the purchase. So if you got a $10 million purchase, they need to be worth $10 million and they need to have liquidity uh, of at least 10% of the purchase price. So in that case, they would need a million dollars liquid. Now you can combine people on the GP to get to those metrics. So it doesn't have to all be the sponsor. Uh, If you have net worth liquidity, that would count and you would have to sign on the loan, obviously, which you would be doing likely anyway. So really like the, the way that we developed our, our relationship with our key sponsor or key, key principal was we had a deal and we picked one of the biggest, baddest investors in Utah to approach with that deal. And we said, hey, we would love you to be on our board of advisors for this deal and just help us keep, our, keep your eyes on it, um, advise us, be part of it, and and uh, we'll give you five percent of the deal just for doing that. And then from there, and he was very excited about that. From there forward, we approached him about sponsoring the loan, and he was excited about that because guess what? That gets you a lot more of the GP. Typically, ten percent to twenty percent, somewhere in there, for being the loan sponsor. So that's and and that that key principal has done five other deals with us since that first deal. So that relationship was one is one that has become just fantastically powerful. Uh, he, I, it was my birthday this week and he came to our birthday lunch and he's just a good friend and a good person. He loves doing deals. He's, uh, he's all about doing good deals and as many of them as he can. And guess what? You are hooking these folks up because if they're all they're doing is sponsoring the loan and being on the GP and having other roles on the GP, likely they are doing very little work and they're leveraging their current resources, their current net worth liquidity into a a very profitable opportunity. And that is super exciting to them. And guess what? They can do that over and over and over again. In other words, if they use their net worth and liquidity to qualify for one loan, they can go out the next day and qualify for another loan of the same size. And then they can do that again. So RKP has, since since he KP'd for us, has met other uh, sponsors and one of them through us and has done deals with other sponsors. And so Our relationship with him, in addition to being profitable through us, has been very profitable uh, for him in in the ancillary. So 
that's the KP role. And it's, it's obviously extremely important. And you want to really put that in, in your, in the forefront of your priorities and developing that relationship, those relationships and having those conversations. So the second team member that we're going to talk about is your lender or your lenders. In some cases, if you have two or three, I wouldn't recommend working more than with more than two or three lenders because most lender brokers are going to go out and shop your loan to different banks, institutions, agencies, and you don't want too many people out there pounding the pavement for you because if a, a bank hears two different people bring the same deal to them, it's kind of, it's a little bit messy. So we have one lender at this point that we work with and uh, Chelsea, you want to talk a little bit about our relationship with them? Yeah. So, um, you know, finding lenders is, there's a, a plethora of lenders out there. I, I think first and foremost is speak with people that you already know and like in the business and find out who they're using. Our lender happened to have come via way of a recommendation and, uh, you know, interview this person as much as they're going to interview you. And you really learn about a lender as you go through the, <clears throat> excuse me, as you go through the process of uh, acquiring a property and debt. And it is so crucial to have a lender on your side, especially during these times where you're putting offers on properties. You need not only along with your LOI, uh, a pre-qualification letter noting that you know, you've know you done deals with this lender before, uh, they know your ability to close, they're familiar with your just general profile. So that naturally and organically will develop over time. But like Tate said, this is another opportunity where pick the people that you like to work with, one or two of them, and keep them in close in your back pocket, and you will have an ongoing relationship with them for many, many years, and they will become absolutely critical to, to your business. And, um, you know, I would say always what we always look for is people that are extremely responsive. A lot of what we're doing is very time sensitive, especially when it comes to our debt. Um, so I, I would put that at the top of, of the list yeah. for sure. Yeah. And lenders are key in, in your underwriting process. They're going to help you project uh, your loan costs, your loan program, so that when you're underwriting a deal, you know what to put in for the interest rate and the interest only months, how many years you get an interest only and uh, the terms and uh, you know all the other important things that go into your underwriting. You need to understand those things before you write an LOI. And so you need a lender that's willing to jump in with you on a deal and really get nitty gritty without having it under contract. And so our lenders are extremely responsive. They're a team of, of three. And so if one of them's not available to answer a question, generally the other two are, and uh, they are extremely knowledgeable in the market. We, we had them on the show, uh, Michael, Michael uh, Salzman and Patrick O'Malley with Northmark. And so if, if you go back a few episodes and listen to that, it's a super powerful episode about debt right now, what's happening in the debt market. I highly recommend that episode. And we recommend working with those guys, quite frankly. So if you want more information on them, email us, Tate or Chelsea at glequitygroup.com. Uh, not Tate or Chelsea, Tate at glequitygroup.com, <laughs> Chelsea at glequitygroup.com. And you can email us for really anything for that matter. So third and certainly not least is broker relationships. And I'll just, I'll talk a little bit about our broker relationships and how to develop those. This is something you're going to start doing right away after you pick a target market that you're going to be shopping in. And broker relationships, we could do a series of six episodes on broker relations. And there's a lot to it. And it's a game and it's really a fun game, I think, because it's a relationships game and it's a long, long uh, and, you know, a long term game. So um, your brokers are obviously your your deal source, right? Like that, this is who's going to be bringing you deals and going to be buying for you with the seller to accept your offer or counter offer your offer 
And a lot of times it's a, a very competitive situation where you have multiple groups at the, at the table trying to get the, the offer. And so if you have a solid relationship with a broker that trusts you and knows that you can get the job done, you're going to be in a really good position to get a deal. And so brokers, like, you know, it's basically, a, a, a it's not a cold calling game, but you will be calling brokers and you can get broker, you can get like a lot of good brokers off of Prexi, Prexi.com, uh, C-R-E-X-I. They list a lot of deals there and you can find the active investors or the active brokers rather in those markets by uh, looking in Crexy. And that's how we, you can source broker deals. You can do Google searches, et cetera. And you're really just trying to establish a relationship, guys. You're not going for a deal right now. You're basically creating a, a quick conversation that's about your vision and about what you're trying to get done. And you want to get in their world, right? Like, they're people, they have lives, they have families, they have hobbies. And that those are the levels that you want to engage a broker with. And yeah, just a couple of things, Tate, um, only because I know we're running out of time here on, to end on brokers is that, you know, I, I lead acquisitions on our team. And I would say that uh, brokers can get in hot markets, 30, 40 plus calls a day. Um, so they're, it, it's, they have a tight network of people they're already working with. So to get in, um, ask for recommendations. Who else do you know investing in that area? Get an intro via email. They're much more likely to answer you. And absolutely crucial, go to the market and get face-to-face with your broker absolutely. if you want to do deals. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's going to be very challenging. And that's just the reality of the market that we're in right now. Yeah, that's so, that's so important, Chelsea. And it's great you brought that up. Go to your market, guys. We say that a lot. There's nothing that replaces your market visits because that's where people start to take you a lot more seriously mm-hmm. when you show up in the market and show that you're willing to travel if you're going out of town uh, and that you're serious. And like that face to face is huge. I would also recommend that you try to get them to take you on property tours first rather than coffee or lunch. Uh, that's That again shows your level of seriousness and it also moves the conversation more towards, let's start talking about deals, let's learn about the market, let's learn about these assets. And, uh, and it's just extremely beneficial to go to your market that you're shopping in and creating these relationships in. Gifts are always a good thing. Follow-up handwritten notes are very powerful. Whenever you talk to somebody for the first time, write them a quick note, thank them for their time and tell them that you're really looking forward to working with them. Those are, those are the relationships with brokers that are going to really pay off in the long run. Uh, I would say work with, you know, maybe two, three, four powerful brokers in your market and you'll get to, you'll be able to figure out who those are with, with just some market research. So So uh, number four is our property manager and our construction manager, which can be one and the same, Um, not always, but this is such a key relationship in both the acquisitions process and the asset management process. Your property manager is responsible for executing on your business plan, right? So you want to get them involved early on in the acquisitions process when you're underwriting and you wanna get their input on the business plan, your target rents, your uh, projected expenses, your projected rent bumps, and you wanna get their thoughts and opinions on what you're trying to do and is it achievable? And they will be hopefully very honest with you about that and, uh, and really help drive the underwriting, right? Like it's really important in, the pre-acquisition process. And then of course, your property manager is the key component of your asset management. So you as an asset manager, uh, which is very important that you do yourself, in my opinion, you as the asset manager, you're managing your property manager and your construction manager. And by doing that, you're ensuring the execution 
of your business plan and success of the project. And, you know, we've learned some hard lessons this year with our property managers. You got to really vet them hard. You want to go and see properties that they manage. You want to sit down at length with them and get their philosophies on the business. And uh, you want to make sure that you have really close alignment with them in terms of their values, how they run their business, how they treat tenants is huge. That's huge, huge, huge. And really just get a feel for, is this a good match for us? Because there's lots of property managers, there's national companies, there's regional local companies, and you have a, you know, you have a lot to choose from. So it's, I would say in general, most property managers are par at best at what they do. The, the exceptional ones are pretty few and far between. It's, it's not a needle in a haystack, so to speak, but you, you really, really want to like talk to a lot of people in, in this, in this position. Yeah. And I think also too, you want to come prepared with a lot of questions, good questions, find out, you know, who, who's within their organization? What are their roles and responsibilities? Like what kind of team do they have? Are they backed by, um, what's their hiring process like, you know, they're, don't be afraid to really dig into the property manager. Like Tate said, it's, it's easy to, to promise and, and to very much under deliver in this business and speak to other property owners that are within their, their portfolio that they'd be happy to share with you. And, and don't speak with just the ones maybe they recommend. See if you can find ones they didn't recommend. Yeah. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of telltale information and absolutely visit some of their properties that they manage. Um, yeah. And, and, you will manage the property manager quite a bit, especially up front. Set up weekly meetings to discuss properties, hold them accountable. Um, we have KPI trackers that we want to know every on a week by week basis what is going on on our property, how many phone calls or walk ins are we getting, how much foot traffic, yeah. what's our uh, delinquencies versus income. Uh, what are, how are our target rents? Do we need to boost rents? Are we overcharging? Are we collecting other income? These tracking tools, as you begin to grow a portfolio are so important to see the bigger picture of, you know, what happened week over week and, and keeping track of that and absolutely holding them accountable. Yeah. Yeah. Really well said. Last and not least in, on your power team uh, that we're going to talk about today are your, is your legal team, your attorneys. And there's really two attorneys that you need. They can be the same, but you need somebody that's a contract attorney in preferably in the state that you're doing business in. And you also need an SEC attorney for syndicating and putting together your private placement memorandums, your operating agreement, uh, any, everything related to investors, investors subscribing to the deal. You need to have your ducks in a row for this because this, you know, this isn't a business that's regulated by the SEC and you have to follow certain rules and you have to disclose certain things in PPMs and you need a great SEC attorney. And an SEC attorney doesn't necessarily have to be in the state that you're in. You can use the same SEC attorney for multiple deals, you know, in different states. And so we have a couple different legal teams that are absolutely crucial and key to what we do. Uh, you, again, you're you're going to be depending on these guys to get it right. Mm -hmm. So same vetting process, right? Talk to referrals, uh, Google them, like check out their reviews, do all the things that are super important to vet your attorneys. And again, uh, and I'll say this about your whole power team, right? Like you want these key people to really get your vision. And we'll, we'll do another episode on the vivid vision um, that and we have a, a, a very detailed vivid vision that we've created. You can share that with them. You can share your credibility kit with all of these people. And you want to share your credibility kit and your vivid vision with all of these people, because you want to make sure that you're on the same page and that they're excited about what you're doing, right? Like they get it and they, they want to contribute. They want to be a part of it. And if you're creating a, a vivid vision that includes a fair amount of growth, 
which I would encourage, you know, certainly encourage all of you to think big, that's going to get people excited because they're going to get that you're not just a one-off deal client. You're somebody that wants to grow with them and help them grow and, uh, and be a contribution to them and who they are. So I would also add to that Tate too, when, um, you know, as part of your underwriting process, don't be afraid to ask for estimates on costs. What, yeah. you know, what their legal review based upon this type of acquisition may be, and absolutely be sure that you are accounting for that in your underwriting. Um, legal fees can add up very quickly and you can find yourself in a pinch if you have not allocated enough, uh, uh, enough capital truth, yep. truthfully for, for closing. And yep. um, the more complex the deals, the more, you know, the more time and more money, the legal fees are going to be. So be, be well prepared. Yeah. And, you know, I, let's just kind of end it with this, like back to this whole long game relationship thing, like get in their world, right? Like, really, you want to be understood and gotten. And one of the easiest, best ways to do that is to really work at understanding and getting the other person that you're talking to. And if you, if you're showing that level of interest in them and their business, they're going to be really excited to work with you. And that's what you want. You want somebody that is stoked that you're doing what you're doing and they want to be a part of it. And they're going to jump when you say jump and and they'll, you'll, you'll jump when they say jump and vice versa. Like that's the kind of, it's like, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? You have a lot to contribute to these people. And that's something to keep in mind is like, you're of value to them as well. And, uh, and that's going to create just quality long-term relationships based on trust. And once you have that, like things get a lot easier. Our lender understands our credit profile, our goals our resources, uh, and we don't have to go through the, the application, pro like all the, all the qualification processes that we go through on each deal now. It's, it's just a much more efficient, streamlined uh, situation that we have with them. That's just one example. So power team, hopefully you took some good notes on this. And hopefully you maybe have some of these relationships in place already, but maybe you got some strategies around how to build these relationships and how to contextualize them in, 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 the, in the sense of them being long game, long-term relationships. And, you know, it, you're, it's almost like dating, right? Like you're, you're getting in their world, they're getting in your world. And, you know, date, that first date is sometimes awkward and, and uh, sometimes it's great. That's just how it is. And so not everybody's going to be a match for you. Like not every, you're not going to want to work with every broker or every property manager. And, and uh, that's good. That's a good thing because that means, you know, who you are, you know, what you're trying to achieve, you know, your goals and values. And um, again, we'll talk about the vivid vision in the next episode likely, but those are things that you want to understand about yourself because it makes you more powerful in going out and doing business in the world. So Chelsea, any final thoughts on the power team? No, I think it's, um, you know, it's just building blocks, uh, right. a lot of word of mouth. And, you know, you're going to, once you start developing relationships with one person, it's going to, you know, transpire into another. And don't be afraid to ask people within your, you know, your investment, your market, or who are doing deals there, or ask your broker for, for, you know, recommendations, ask your attorney, like it's a very tight knit world and good people usually make good recommendations. And yeah. when things go well, be a referral to that person as well. They, they depend on also growing their business as much as you do. And it's likely that if you're giving good referrals, you know, they're going to come back to you and, you know, do favors in return. Absolutely. Absolutely. One last key ingredient, I think, to the, this whole thing is flattery will get you everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. and be authentic with it, right? Like re do research on these brokers, find out how much volume they did or how, you know, what kind of listings they do and what kind of success they've had so that they, they know that you've like looked into them and that you're taking this seriously. Right. And you've chosen them to work with them and, and just, you know, remind them how great they are. Right. And like, that's that, that'll get you a lot of places in life. And if you're authentic about it and not cheesy and schmoozy, it's really delicious for people to, to get to interact with you. 
So on that, listeners, hopefully you got a lot of good nuggets out of this. I think this was a great episode, Chels. And uh, we encourage you to just keep doing what you're doing. Keep coming back to this podcast. There's other great podcasts. There's other great conferences, meetup groups, networking groups. Those are the things that you want to do to be taking massive action and building not only your power team, but your entire business. Mm -hmm. So on that, we thank you for listening. Go to www.investwithgreenlight.com to learn more about opportunities that we have right now in, in investing, but also you can book an appointment with, uh, with us, either one of us, uh, and just to talk business and no strings attached. We'll sit down with you for 15 minutes and really like get, get down and dirty with like how things are going in your business. What, what can you do to add? What can you, what can you subtract? Like what strategies you can start putting in place and we can talk to you about your goals, your vision. And uh, we love doing that. We love hearing from hearing from our listeners and people take us up on this all the time. And we've built some great relationships with our listeners through that. So on that Thank you for listening to another episode of the Apartment Guys podcast, and we will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Apartment Guys with Tate Seamer. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.